Increasing numbers of N-Gage locos have been fitted with the Next18 decoder interface. So this is the Lentz Next18 decoder and on there you'll see the little interface. The advantages are is that the, the decoder itself is very compact, it's a positive fit and you have got lots of switchable outputs so in this case we have up to seven with 50 milliamps each so it means that manufacturers can build in more lighting effects on these N-Gage locos and there's a few effects on this loco that you wouldn't pick up if uh, you drove it on analog I'm looking at one of the new range of Fleischmann Electrics in this case it's a BR193 Vectron that's clear the decks a bit so we've got the, the decoder and the loco. So the loco itself is quite a tight fit. The body just spreads to find on Fleischmann locos that you can gently ease them out of the chassis. So they can be quite a, a tight fit. There we go. So the cab insert came out, it will just clip back in. We'll just put it back in place and click it back in. There we are. So the de decoder interface is actually quite well hidden on these latest locos. So I think it's the same with the BR185s um, and 146s as well. There's a screw here that just keeps the whole board centralised. And then there are four clips. So you'll probably find that the light units all come out anyway, so what I'm going to do is actually take them off before they fall off. That's the light units up. And then the whole circuit board can lift off if we just release that. There's quite a lot of space in here, in fact they do sound versions of these. So, that's the blanking plug. Keep that if you ever want to put it back to analogue. And then the next 18 just lines up and plugs in there. That's it. And then it's a reverse process to get the loco back together. Tweezers are probably easier for dealing with these clips. Okay. Lights push back in and the little housings and diffusers go over the top. And there's two pins. Awful lot easier to do when you've not got a camera in the way. And don't forget to put the screw back in. Put that back round to the original orientation. And then the body just slowly slides on. Make sure those lights go back in, clicks down, buffer beams clip up as well. You might find that they've gone in at an angle. We'll just push it up so it straightens out. That's it. 
The first thing you notice with the lens chips is the quality of the motor control. They will run very smoothly from slow speeds. So what we find with the lights is that the headlights uh, flip over as we expect them to. Function 1 turns on the red lights on this end. Function 2 turns on the red lights at this end. And function 5 puts on the high beams. Um, again directional, so lights on this end, function 5's there. So you can leave it that way if you're happy with that. But we can also do a bit of function mapping. Um, so we break out the instruction manuals there on page 28. Um, function mapping is section 4.9. And then we can go to the CV list itself. So the block of function mapping CVs is there. So 33 through to 47. Importantly, at the end, it shows what they're allocated to. So output A is F0 forward, so white light at front. Output B is the white light at back. Output C is the red light at the front. And output D is the red light at the back. And output F is on function 5, so that's the high beams on this particular model. The reason that this is done in a generic way is that every loco can be different. So how the manufacturers make the circuit board connections to the lights can vary across manufacturers. So I'm going to do this on programming a main on the lens system. So CV, well the first one on the list is CV35, which I want to move, and I want to give that a value, enter, a value of 8, enter, so I've done this all by just reading the manual and just taking note of which values I want to put in, um, escape, 36, I want to go to 16, so I'm allocating that high beam function to function 2, Thirty nine is where function five is stored, and I'm going to turn that to zero and turn function five off. And forty seven is function one backwards. I'm going to put that to four. Right, so that's programming on the fly. <laughs> Again, these things are all covered on our website and other films. So now we should have red lights on the back and function 2 turns on the high beams. So the red lights now should change over with direction of travel. And the it means F0 is the white lights directional, F1 is the red lights directional, and F2 is that high beam. It's a bit over the top, it's just something to do if you want to tidy up the functions. So the Lens uh, Next18 is a fully DCC compliant uh, digital decoder, so it will work on any DCC system. It supports uh, short addressing, two digit addressing and long addressing, the four digit, three and four digit addressing. Um, it also has the Lens ABC feature and Railcom. Most people will just want it for the, the super running qualities.